Hey everyone, in today's quick video, I wanted to share five of my favorite phonics activities that you can use in a K through two classroom. Now I love creating and finding new phonics activities for our students because they help them practice all sorts of phonics skills. They can work on phoneme grapheme mapping. They can work on decoding phonics skills. They can work on encoding phonics skills. They can blend, they can segment, they can isolate all different types of phonemes with these activities that I'm going to share today. So if you are on the lookout for some new phonics ideas and centers, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. into each one and show you how to use it, I will let you know up front that all five of these are already available in the SJT Literacy Club. That is my monthly literacy club where I upload different phonics, phonemic awareness activities, I upload things for fluency, comprehension, and vocabulary. It is a brand new teaching membership that I just started this past summer, but I love, love, love the teachers that I already have in it. They're constantly giving me ideas and requests for skills and activities that their students need in their kindergarten, first, and second grade classrooms, so I'm constantly looking at how I can meet their students' needs, which in turn will probably help your students' needs as well. I do also have a couple of free samples of each of these, and I have some of them listed over on TPT in case you're not part of the club. So for each of the five activities that I share, I will show you how to play it, and I'll tell you where you can find it. All right, all that being said, let's dive into my favorite phonics centers. Number one is called Spin, Say, Spell. Here's an example of what this looks like, and you can see it is a simple black and white page here where students will go ahead and spin that spinner. For this example, this is from the vowel teams portion, and we have soap, boat, snow, and bow. So of course this would be used after students have been explicitly taught these different patterns, but they would spin one, they would say it aloud, and then they would go ahead and write it down in the boxes. So if they land on snow, they would say snow, and then they would practice writing it down. Now I love this type of activity because it helps students really get that grapheme and phoneme connection when they are saying the words aloud and then matching the sounds they hear to print by writing it down. Now that example was from the vowel teams portion, but I actually have about 68 different sheets. They walk through CVC, digraphs, blends, all sorts of different phonics skills that your students can work on. And I have them even separated further. So for CVC, I will have some mixed sets where you'll have all the different vowels, but I also have have, for example, two that are just CVC A medial vowel and then CVC O medial vowel. So you can really kind of narrow in on the skills that you're working on with your students. Now I also like that one because it can definitely be played independently or they can do it with a partner and just keep spinning, saying, and spelling until all 10 of the writing boxes are filled in. That activity is in the Literacy Club, but I also just uploaded it to TPT. So this is the cover right here and you can find it down in the description. Fun next activity number two I wanted to share today is a simple one called Roll and Race. And this is a fluency type activity. Now we all know how important it is for students to be able to identify each of the graphemes and the phonemes, blend them together to make a word and actually decode the words that they're seeing. But we also know that as they continue to work through these phonic skills and become more proficient in them, they need to work on their fluency. We want our students to be able to decode these words quickly and efficiently so that way they can read at a more appropriate rate and understand what they're reading. These simple roll and raise sheets are great to use independently or with a partner and they just have students reviewing different skills that they've already been taught so they can read them faster. You can see here this is a CVC version so naturally you wouldn't have done this until students have already been taught CVC words and how to decode them for a while. But here students would just roll a die and whatever row they landed on they are tasked to quickly be able to decode each of the words. Once they have gone ahead and read an entire row they can color in one of the books at the end of the row. That just shows that they have read that row and the whole point of the game is to continue rolling and reading until they have colored in all 10 books. Now this game I specifically have in the Literacy Club, it is under the Fluency section and there are over 30 different sheets. They have things like letter name, letter sound, 
uh, CVC words, and there's also a bunch of nonsense sheets kind of mixed in there as well. I talk all about the importance of teaching nonsense words in this video right here, but as I mentioned in that video, it is important to kind of sprinkle some nonsense words into your students' real words to make sure they're able to apply each phonics skill. So if you're a member of the club, go to Fluency and you'll find Roll and Race Fluency Sheets under there. The third phonics activity I want to share is a fun whole group one. You could also do this in small group, but I have done it whole group on the smart board with the entire class, and that is to use these blending slides. For this one, it'll be easiest for me to just show you how they work on my computer, so let me do just that. Here are the different blending slides that I have. You can see they are in Google Slides. And this right here is the Vowel Teams version. Um, I have a bunch of different ones for each different phonic skill over on TPT. And this one for the Vowel Teams, it is an underwater theme with a shark that kind of glides through to help you blend the word. Um, for example, the Silent E version is space themed and it has a little UFO that goes through. So here we are going to be blending some vowel teams. So you'll go to slideshow and when this shows up, basically students will have to say the sound where the shark is. So t, e, m, team. And you can see that the shark kind of blends it all together. And now on my screen or on my computer, I'm just clicking the arrow to go through. So we have s, e, t, seat, l, e, Leap. E -g -big. And as you can see, I threw in some nonsense words as well. In fact, I have a whole video about nonsense words that you can check out if you'd like. But these are just a fun and engaging way for students to practice blending all sorts of different skills you've reviewed. Phonics activity number four is a personal favorite of mine, and this one is called Say, Tap, Write. Now, similar to spin, say, spell from the first one, here students, again, are looking at an image, they are saying the word aloud, and then they are going to encode the word. But in this one, there's a little more emphasis on actually tapping out, so segmenting the sounds they hear, and then also making sure that they are putting the graphemes into sound boxes so they can really have a strong phoneme grapheme matchup. Now, I have these for all sorts of skills. They are in the SJT Literacy Club, and they're on TPT. Here's an example of how the product works. So there are a couple different options here. You will see in the binder and on the page there, that's the one page like student sheet. And then there's also a little binder ring that students could do if you were doing this in a small group. But essentially for each skill that they're working on, let's look at that uh, digraph one there with sheep. Students will have to say the word sheep, tap the little dots, sh, e, and then they will have to write the sounds in the correct boxes below. So they would have SH, the double E, and then the P. Same for chip, bath, brush, and more. And then with the binder ring here, it's going to be all the same images, and students would do the same thing. So this one is flute, so they would say it, they would tap out the sounds, f, u, u, t, and then they would go ahead and write it. Now for those on the binder ring, I included that option in case teachers wanted to have students build the word with some letter tiles or, you know, write it down on a mini whiteboard. I imagined that one being a more guided option as opposed to the actual physical sheet where students might do that independently. And just back to that picture real quick since I was taking a look at it, that one underneath tape, I mentioned this before, I just noticed this in the image. I didn't do these sheets myself, they were photographed, but I would actually take that silent E and put it outside the box so it would be t a and only T-A-P would be in the boxes and the E would be moved outside. Now, if you wanna know more about why I did that, I talk all about it in my how to teach students silent E words right here, but since I just noticed that quick error, I wanted to point it out. Now, these are also on TPT as well as the club. Here is the cover of what they look like and there are over 120 different cards and they are broken up into skills. So we have CVC words, digraphs, blends, vowel teams, 
so on and so forth. I also have an entire section free for silent E words that I will list down in the description in case you want to check them out. And last but not least, phonics game number five is a decodable game called Read in Color. Now, this is a very simple but effective board game where students are not just decoding the words, but they're also trying to make meaning. So with these, again, they are separated by skill. Here is a CVC version, and this can be played independently or with a partner. If you're playing with a partner, students will use some sort of cube as their game piece, and they can start anywhere on the board. Then with a simple die, they will roll it, move that many spaces. They will have to read the word, so pin, and then they have to look in the grid and color in the image that matches the word. So again, I like this because they are making meaning. Students continue rolling, reading, and coloring as they go around the board until the whole grid in the middle is filled in. Again, very simple, but also very effective, easy and effective, two major wins. I find that with a lot of phonics games, if they're too involved in figuring out how to play and all the different steps going on, then students are actually taking too much time away from actually decoding or blending or segmenting or whatever you're trying to have them do. But when done right, games can be such a great way for students to practice these skills. Now, all of those read and color game boards for all the different skills are in the SJT Literacy Club under the phonics section. But I went ahead and I took out the CVC board specifically and I turned them into a freebie for you. So I will have those linked down in the description below. So there you have five engaging and effective phonics centers that you can take and use in your classrooms right away. I hope you can see by the types of activities that we really try try to cover all sorts of aspects of learning phonics skills. We have phoneme segmentation, we have blending, we have fluency practice, we have decoding and making meaning. These are all different aspects of phonics instruction that we want to incorporate in our classrooms. Make sure you grab any freebies I mentioned down below, and I will also list down there if they are on TPT or somewhere else that you can grab them other than the Literacy Club, I will post it down in the description in case you wanted to purchase it. I would love to know from you of these five activities which one is your favorite and which one do you think your kids would like the most? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. This video will be added to my phonics and phonemic awareness playlist. If you head over there, I have a ton of videos sharing all about different ideas, activities, freebies, and things to keep in mind when teaching phonics to your students. See you in the next video. Bye.